On this, the May 3rd, 2023 edition of What's Going On With Shipping, Iran seizes a second tanker. I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to this episode. So this channel looks at commercial shipping for over now two years, go all the way back to the ever given grounding in the Suez. But this week has been a unusual one because of the number of incidents that we're just seeing happening here. And what we have in the news this morning is the Iranian Republican Guard Corps Navy seized a vessel transiting the Straits of Hormuz outbound from the Persian Gulf into the Gulf of Oman. This is the second tanker seized by the Iranians. And we believe it's part of this tit-for-tat between the Iranians and the U.S. for the U.S. seizing a tanker with Iranian oil on board. All right, we're going to give you the latest information on this, give you an update on what we know about the other ship, the Sweet Advantage and the Suez Rajan. And try to put this into some sort of context for everyone. It's been a friggin' hell of a week. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. So the U.S. Navy Fifth Fleet has provided imagery, which I'll show you in a minute, a video of the seizure of this vessel, the Niovi. I'm not sure, N-I-O-V-I, the Niovi. And this vessel was outbound from the United Arab Emirates from Dubai, had just come out of a shipyard, and this is the reason why the ship is riding so high, when it was besieged by a group of fast boats and vessels of the Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard Corps Navy, about 11 vessels in total. And as we mentioned, this has been a week of tanker news going on. Uh, earlier this week, uh, we've talked about the explosion on board the Pablo. This is off the coast of Malaysia. We believe this vessel was involved in the transportation of oil, maybe from Iran, could have been from Venezuela or Russia. But this vessel suffered a cataclysmic explosion on board because of the failure of its inert gas system, we believe. This led to a vapor explosion on board the vessel that basically gutted the vessel, killed three people. But earlier that week, we had the issue with U.S. and Iran seizing vessels from each other. And that situation has been one that has we've seen happen before. We've seen these types of attacks take place. If you go back to 2019 and 2020, we saw these levels of attacks taking place where vessels were being grabbed by each side. Now we come to this most recent seizure, and let's go look at the videotape by the U.S. Fifth Fleet. So this is the statement by Commander Timothy, Haw uh, Timothy Hawkins from the U.S. Fifth Fleet talking about the vessel being grabbed, and this is from drone footage. Uh, according to Commander Hawkins, there was no distress signal issued by the vessel. Uh, and so the vessel was ordered by the Iranian Republican Guard Corps Navy to basically divert course, turn around and head to an anchorage just uh, just around the area around Bandar Abbas, which is right where the Advantage Suite, the tanker they grabbed earlier, was seized. Now, we're, we're thinking that the taking of these two tankers comes in conjunction with the diversion of another vessel. This is a Marshall Island flag vessel. This is the Suez Rajan. Advantage Suite is Marshall Island also. The new vessel here, the Neovi, this is a Panama registered vessel. But we believe the Suez Rajan, this was a vessel that was sailing from the South China Sea, uh, had been, excuse me, had been in the South China Sea, sailed from Singapore, and was basically diverted off the east coast of Africa. Its AIS has gone dark now. And we believe it's heading for Houston, Texas to have its cargo offloaded. This new tanker, the Neovi, is a Greek-owned tanker, much like the Advantage Suite. And we believe that is the linkage here that we're seeing. The, the other weird thing about this tanker, I'll note for you, is this is a very large crude carrier, over 300,000 tons. It's empty, just came out of the shipyard. And more importantly, it is also owned by a company, a Greek company, that does business with Iran. So it's a really unusual seizure. I'm really trying to get a, a, a figure on this. This issue of seizing tankers and attacking tankers, as I said before, been going on since 2019. Back then, there was a series of drone and limpet mine attacks uh, on vessels. We've seen drone attacks on Israeli-owned vessels. But now we believe this is in retaliation for the seizure of the Suez Rajan. We saw the same thing uh, back in 2022 when the U.S. seized another vessel and Iran responded by grabbing two uh, Greek-owned vessels. 
give you some other imagery here. Here's satellite image, and uh, I want to thank the crew over at Tanker Trackers. Uh, Tanker Trackers provided a lot of this information that I'm talking about today. Uh, great follow on Twitter. Uh, always follow them. Go on over to Tanker Trackers. They do this on a daily basis. Uh, amazing group of people. Uh, Samir and his crew just do a fantastic job. Here's the aerial view, and you can see the vessels surrounded by these small vessels. Now, you get to ask the question here, can these small vessels really do anything to a 300,000 ton tanker? And the question is yes and no. So probably these vessels have light attack weapons on board, machine guns, maybe rocket propelled grenades, maybe something a little bit heavier. They can punch holes in the side of the vessel, probably not below the waterline, but so they can punch holes in it. The ship just came out of a dry dock. It doesn't have to worry about exploding like Pablo. Uh, so it's been gas free. That should not be an issue for the vessel. However, these vessels are the harbinger of larger vessels and more importantly, aircraft that could potentially come in and launch air to surface missiles or larger naval craft bringing in surface to surface missiles. Uh, the vessel reverse course and now satellite imagery has the ship uh, very close to the position where Advantage Suite is. So here's Advantage Suite, and here is the image showing the Neovi right now. Just at this anchorage, uh, Bandar Abbas would be off to the north. This is within Iranian territorial waters. And I'm going to talk about in a minute why the United States Navy did not respond to this. So here is uh, marine traffic showing the vessel. Here is Neovi, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. So one of the things you get here is the amount of traffic that just comes through this area here. This is where uh, the vessel was. Uh, she was outbound from it, and we can put on her past track here and show you exactly where she was outbound from. Heading outbound, she has now been turned around and is at this anchorage right here, just southeast of Bandar Abbas, but within the territorial waters of Iran. So... Nothing was in position to basically stop this. And again, this ship is going to conform to threats, and this ship was basically being threatened. Looking at the vessel, here is the information on uh, Niovi. Uh, she is a not too old of a tanker, an 18-year-old tanker built back in 2005, built in Samsung Shipbuilding Heavy Industries. Uh, if you look, her classification society is NK. She's managed by a Greek firm, uh, Altomare. Her uh, technical manager is Smart Tankers. Those are the owners of her. And as I mentioned to you before, a Panamanian registry vessel. Go over to Equus, same type of information we're finding here. Uh, the only thing I would uh, mention here, the uh, ship manager is located in Piraeus, we mentioned classification being with NK. And then the PI, this is the protection and indemnity insurance. This is the insurance company for the vessel, is the West of England ship owners. That's a fairly large standard uh, PI club that does uh, protections for these vessels here. So this all hits right at the same time when this story is on Splash 24 7 by Sam Chambers. Tanker markets at decades high, according to Danish ship finance. So one of the things we're seeing right now is a lot of issues with tankers. If you follow tankers, if you're following the market for tankers right now, they've been down this week. Uh, tankers took a bit of a plunge this week. But Danish ship finance, which is one of these key publications that come out with a, a kind of a biannual shipping report, uh, are basically saying that tanker uh, trades are on course for the best earnings this century. Uh, this, ten, uh, this report uh, goes on here. Distance-adjusted demand is predicted by the Copenhagen outfit to expand by 5.6% 5, 5 and 10.9% for crude and product tankers, respectively, while the fleets are scheduled to expand by less than 6 uh, excuse me, less than 3%. So let me put this in the context. All this takes place in the backdrop of what we know today as basically the uh, uh, the Russia-Ukraine war. Russia-Ukraine war has altered the way oil is moved around the world. You had two issues come into place. In December, you had the oil price cap on Russian crude oil, $60 per barrel. And then in February, you had the diesel uh, cap, $100 per barrel. 
And what has happened is the EU, the G7, and a batch of other countries have stopped importing Russian oil and Russian diesel, which means they have to get that crude oil and diesel from somewhere else. At the same time, the Russians are exporting their oil and diesel to other places. And all of that involves additional distance travel, or what's called ton miles. In other words, you have to move a ton of cargo so many miles, and those miles are increasing. When you have a finite amount of tankers, which the world does, as a matter of fact, according to the Danish finance report, there are less tankers out there. That means that the tankers that are available have to do more work. They become more expensive to, to lease, to, to contract, and the tonnage, the price to move a ton of oil increases exponentially here. So all these disruptions, the Russia-Ukraine war, the price cap, uh, the, this, this issue of ship-to-ship -ship transfers off of Malaysia, the Mediterranean, and uh, Spain and the Atlantic, which is the movement of oil, the uh, uh, sanctioned oil against Iran and Venezuela, uh, and now this issue with longer tonned miles, all of this translates into a lot of issues regarding the, the movement of cargo and oil prices. Then on top of that, you cause these other elements on top. So you have, for example, the United States, which contacts the owner of the Suez uh, uh, Rajan and basically convinces them to turn off their AIS and divert to a port to offload the cargo, which they believe is sanctioned Iranian cargo. And this then leads Iran to counter and seize two vessels, the Advantage Suite that we've talked about and now the Niovi. And to come back to the issue, well, wait a minute, Sal, we have a huge Navy. We have the United States Navy. The Fifth Fleet is stationed in the Straits of Hormuz, the Persian Gulf, the Gulf of Oman. Why was there no action by the U.S. Navy to prevent the, the seizure of the first vessel, the Advantage Suite, and then the second vessel? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one. We know Niobe didn't issue a distress call, according to the Fifth Fleet uh, public affairs officer. Second of all, these vessels are not U.S. flagged. They're not U.S. owned. Even though the cargo on Advantage Suite was a Chevron cargo, which is a U.S.-based car uh, cargo, the ships are not U.S. flagged. Marshall Islands does not get the protection of the U.S. Navy. Even though we have a compact with the Marshall Islands to defend the Marshall Islands, that does not cover their vessels. And so we do not come to the aid of other vessels unless it is in a life or death distress situation on fire or sinking. Uh, and you can make the argument, well, this is a case. They're being seized. They're being grabbed. But that has not been the, pa the, the case in the past. If you go back to the tanker wars of the 1980s, many people will sit there and say, well, wait a minute, Sal. We escorted tankers during the tanker war. This is where ships like the Samuel B. Roberts uh, and the Stark uh, got hit. Well, Stark got hit from an errant uh, surface to air, or excuse me, an air to surface missile fired by Iraq. The Samuel B. Roberts hit a mine. And in both those cases, uh, they were not escorting tankers at the time. And in truth, the only time we escorted tankers during the entire tanker war was the very end of the war in 1987 to 1988. And that is only after Kuwait reflagged their tankers under the U.S. registry and we put U.S. crews on board. That was the only time we actually physically escorted tankers. The rest of the time, we don't. And neither does the rest of the world. And what I think needs to happen here is that we're seeing an escalation, a ratcheting up of tension in this region. We're seeing attacks on vessels, drone attacks. We're seeing seizures of vessels. When we saw something similar happen off the east coast of Africa, there was an anti-piracy uh, patrols that were set up. On the west coast of Africa right now, there are anti-piracy patrols because of the rampant piracy on the west coast of Africa. There may need to be a United Nations uh, force put in there to do it. But the problem is, th this is not pirates. This is the nation of Iran, or Iran, I apologize. I keep doing that, and it's my apologies. It's just, I've said it that way for years and years. It's not meant as derogatory. It's just the way I say it. So, But Iran is a nation state, a sovereign state that has rights on the world oceans. But they are making claims about vessels in their waters. Remember, the argument to seize Advantage Suite was it ran down an Iranian vessel. That's what they said. Uh, not sure. We haven't heard anything about why Niovi has been grabbed. But to start 
deflecting these vessels to stop a military operation by the Iranians could lead to shots being fired. And while we had an undeclared naval war with Iran in the late 80s, prior to the Persian Gulf War of the 1990s, uh, that's the issue that will the United States and its allies do. Uh, I talked about a book that I think is very essential reading, Bruce Jones's To Rule the Waves. And Jones talks about the idea that we may be going back to regional controls of oceans, that we may have powers wanting to exert more and more power over certain areas. And we've seen that with Iran. They've been doing this since 2019 on lipid mine attacks, on drone attacks, on vessel seizures. Uh, this is not new. I mean, go back to the point when during the Obama administration, Iran seized two American naval vessels, Mark VI patrol vessels, and held the crews hostage and eventually released them. But this has been what's been going on in the Persian Gulf for a long time. And the potential here is, is we're seeing this in the Persian Gulf, we're seeing it in the South China Sea, and we're seeing it in the Black Sea. And there's literally no reaction by many of the world navies to ensure the freedom of the seas. If freedom of the seas is lost, that impacts our ability to conduct world trade. And what that means is you may not you know, disrupt world trade, you may not see the flow of goods stop. I don't think that happens, these are regional issues. But what you do see is increased cost in transportation, in insurance, in some goods not getting to markets like they should be, and products that should cost an X amount of money now costing more. And that's what we talk about when we start raising these issues of contested seas. If you go back to the very reason for the U.S. Navy, it's not power projection, it's not catapulting uh, hornets off an aircraft carrier. It's not firing Tomahawk cruise missiles from a Virginia class submarine. It is to protect commerce, to protect free trade. Alfred Thayer Mahan in his seminal book, you know, The Influence of Sea Power Upon History, talks about the idea that the whole reason for a Navy is to protect commerce and world trade. And when world trade is threatened, there needs to be a response by it. Understand the U.S. Navy and its allies, and it's not the U.S. Navy by itself. Let's be clear about that. But the U.S. Navy and its allies have created the greatest beneficiary of freedom of the seas post-World War II than in any time in history. And the world has benefited from that. Trade has increased exponentially. We've gone from half a billion tons of cargo traded in 1950 to nearly 12 billion tons of cargo today on the world seas. It has made the world a much better place. It is basically increased, lifted every boat around the world so that everybody can benefit from it, some countries more than others, obviously. However, this contention of the sea is a vital issue. We need to be aware of this. When Iran grabs vessels, when Russia and Ukraine are contesting over the Black Sea, you have potentials now in the Baltic, you have potentials in the South China Sea, the Persian Gulf, the Gulf of Oman, the Pacific Ocean. These are all issues that need to be raised. And the one group that should be talking about this more than any other one is the U.S. Navy, but they don't because I don't think they really comprehend their, that one of their primary missions is to safeguard world trade and particularly the trade of the United States. The Advantage Suite was hauling a load of crude oil to the United States. That was seized by Iran. And the fact we haven't heard more about that is, I think, an issue. I don't want war. I don't want a conflict. My heart goes to the merchant mariners who are caught in the middle of this. But they're neat. But the problem is ships and the mariners and the cargoes are pawns in this great power struggle. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, always happy for comments. I know I don't do things right. Good God, I mispronounce everything. Uh, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it around social media, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? Well, you can hit the super thanks button down below or hit the Patreon link when it comes up here at the end or down below and you become a monthly or yearly patron of the page. Until our next video or the next time a tanker blows up or Iran seizes a vessel or the U.S. for that matter, I'll be back.